Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Unreal Engine C++ training series, where today we'll be talking about keeping frame rate independence. I, once again, am Pharaoh. Glad to be back with you all. What do we mean by keeping our independence from frame rate? Keeping our independence from frame rate is an often important topic in game development. Unless we're running with predetermined specifications, as is usually the case when working on console games, or if we're locking our frame rate in our game, which is generally frowned upon in, the, in PC gaming, we, exactly, we don't really know how the game will run on most systems. Some players will lock to 30 FPS, some will target 60, and others might be running high refresh monitors at 144 FPS. Regardless of if the game is competitive or not, we want all of our players to be able to experience the game in much the same way, regardless of frame rate. Doing this requires being a little bit clever with math, but doing this from the start is definitely much easier than trying to fix it later. What we're going to do today is we're going to create a healing functionality for a player. We want, the, we want the, to be able to heal the player at a consistent health value per second, regardless of frame rate. In order to do this, we'll borrow the structure that we had in our tutorial for timers. If you haven't seen that yet, or if you need refresh, then I suggest clicking on the card at the top right of the screen and watch that first. So without further ado, let's get started. Now I've actually, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I've already started. Um, what I did beforehand is I wrote some of the boilerplate that we have for this tutorial. Um, so I included timermanager.h. And here I've got our start heal and stop heal functions that we had, um, or that, that we're going to have. Once again, I borrowed this structure straight from the, the, timer, the timers tutorial. So this shouldn't be any surprise. We've got a start heal function and a stop heal function and a heal function. The start heal function is going to call the heal function when the button or action is pressed and when it is released, the stop heal function will be called. What we have here in the player input component is our bind actions for our press and release events. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. So if we move over to our header file, you'll see that we have uh, our start heal function, our stop heal function, our heal function, and our timer handle function. Just like last time, once again, nothing, nothing too special. What we're, what we're going to do though is we're going to create two more variables. We're going to create a float player health variable. And we're also going to create another float and this one is going to be our healing rate value. And you know what, I'm gonna make both of these U properties because I want to be able to edit these values uh, without having to recompile the entire code all the time. So edit defaults only. If you're unfamiliar with U, with U properties and what they do and how to use them, I have a tutorial that you can go ahead and click on the card at the top right. Okay, so now those are both U properties are, and they're going to be accessible to our blueprints. I'm going to come into the character constructor and give these two variables some values. So player health, I'm just gonna set it to 30 for now. And our healing rate, let's set it to two, two. And what we want our healing rate to do is this is actually going to be the amount of health points that we add to our player when healing per second. So it's going to have a unit of health points per second, and that's going to be important later on. So we've got our start heal, our stop heal set up. Now we can move on to the healing function. And this is also going to be super simple. So if our player health is, is less than 100, then what we're going to do is we're gonna say player health plus equals healing rate, right? Right. So now we're gonna go and we're just gonna add in uh, uh, some verification for debugging just to make sure that, we, that we're that we actually doing what we're doing. 
log temp warning text and this text macro right here just works the same way as uh, printf would so we're gonna go player health and we're going to use percent %f come out here and what we're going to replace at a percent %f with is our player health obviously so with all this set up I should be able to come in compile and while that's compiling what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in the but the action mapping or button press that we just had it's going to be named heal remember that this value right here has to be the same exact string as what we put in there otherwise Unreal Engine is not going to want to know what to do. Alright, so I'm just going to bring this over to the left mouse button because why not. And now that's done compiling, I'm going to hit play and what I should see happen is a slow increase since our health value is actually at 30 and we're supposed to be healing at 2 health points per second, we should see our health steadily increase in the output log. So I'm going to click the left mouse button and that was not slow at all. We can look at it and it took maybe a second. Let's do it again. Oh, gotta scroll back down to the bottom, huh? All right. Yeah, that, that was a second at most. So we have a bug there's something wrong and our frame rate is affecting the game maybe is it to test that out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go t dot max FPS and set our maximum FPS to 15 and just see what happens because I feel like the game before was running at a maximum of 120 FPS so now I'm gonna bring it back down to 15 and see if that changes anything now it looks super choppy obviously and clearly our frame rate is affecting how our game is running I'm gonna go ahead and reset that T max FPS just because that's uh, atrocious and let's let's run it again yep that's a second so our frame rate is clearly affecting the way that our healing function is operating and the reason that is happening is because we're frame rate dependent oh, I'm sorry <laughs> and it's it's happening because there's a little bit of something missing from our healing equation so our healing equation says player health plus equals healing rate so let's take a look and see what we could be missing we're gonna have to do a little math in order to do this so I'm just gonna open up this product uh, this uh, this application right here so we can do a little bit of math if we say that health is going to have a variable of H and it's going to have a unit of health points okay we're gonna say that our heal rate is going to be variable R why not and that's going to have a unit like we talked about before of health points per second another important thing that we have is that because our f our function is being called after every time the frame gets rendered so delta seconds what we're going to need is we're going to need delta seconds as well so if we come in and we say uh, delta time is going to have representation of DT or Delta T that's a Greek letter Delta right there and that's going to have a unit of seconds alright so if we say that health is unit H heal rate is in health points per second and our Delta time is is in seconds we should be able to see that when we go ahead and add in our units we replace we're going to replace health plus equals 
R with the units. We're going to say HP plus equals health points per second. And if you've ever taken a physics class or a calculus class or anything like that, you'll notice that these two don't have the same exact unit, so we shouldn't be able to logically add them. For example, you should not be able to add together a distance and a speed. That makes no sense at all in, in the physical world. So what we should be able to do is we should be able to multiply this by some seconds which I'm going to give the variable of T capital T we should be able to multiply our healing rate by some T to figure out how to make this work so what is T well if we say that our function gets called every delta time, then how many times is that per second? If we look in, we see that 1 divided by delta time is our answer. 1 divided by delta time is our FPS. So if our frame is getting called every 16 milliseconds, we know that that translates to 60 FPS. Our frame is, our, our function is getting called 60 times per second. So our healing rate our healing rate times our time times our 1 over delta t should be our health Just one moment, <laughs> lost myself in my notes. Okay, yes. So in order for this to be true, I'm sorry, our rate times our time should be equal to our health. But we don't know what that time is. If we go ahead and replace everything here, so we want our rate to be two HP per second. So what we have is our 2 HP per second and this function is getting called 1 every delta T seconds which is going to be 60 if our, if our delta T is 16 milliseconds or it'll be 30 if our delta T is 33 milliseconds and we need to multiply that times our T so from here on it's just simple algebra these two cancel so then you get 1 equals 1 over delta T times T and then from there you can see that T is equal to delta T if we add or if we multiply our healing rate by delta T get world get delta seconds what we should expect to see then is our healing rate is fixed because what we have is we're multiplying our healing rate times delta seconds times 1 over delta seconds. That makes sense? I hope it does. If you have any questions, always feel free to let me know in the comment section down below or tweet at me at not from Egypt. Um, because this this can get a little confusing. I've confused myself trying to trying to write this several times. But all we need to do is multiply our healing rate by our delta seconds. If I come back in and compile, what we should expect, once again, is our healing rate to take us 
what is that, 35 seconds in order for us to get to 100 health. Now, I, I really don't want it to take 35 seconds. That's a really long time. So I'm going to change these numbers up. Come into the content browser, content, third person CPP, blueprints, third person character. And this is the reason why I made um, these two variables right here into U properties so that I can just edit these values right here. So I'm going to say 80 health points and we're going to heal at a rate of five health points per second. So we should expect it to take us 20 or, or four seconds to get from 80 to 100 uh, uh, health. So let's come in and save everything and hit play. Go one, two, three, four, right about there. And let's try that again. This time we're going to change up our frame rate to see if that actually helped anything. So once again, I'm gonna go t.maxfps, and I'm gonna set that to 15. What we should expect is hopefully, fingers crossed, when we run this and we start to actually work, when I click on the, the left mouse button, when I hold it, it should once again take me approximately four seconds in order for us to get to our proper value which is 100. So let's try it out. One, two, three, four. And it works. Yay. Yay. So this solution works regardless of frame rate. So it doesn't matter if our player is playing at 15 FPS or 165 FPS, which is ideal for our scenario. Because some people like to play at 30 FPS. Some people prefer that. Some people like to play at 60, but a lot of people sometimes they might play at variable frame rates where the game will vary the frame rate depending on the, the load because it can't keep up with a solid V-Sync level, uh, for, for example. Once again, if we look at the math, the reason why we multiply by delta time, wow, this actually looks really hectic. I'm so sorry about this. But think about, or, or when, when you think about this, just remember that the reason why we're multiplying here by delta seconds is because here it's getting multiplied by one over delta seconds. So if you remember that, you can use this in, you can probably use this in other scenarios, but here we're just using it to keep our frame rate separated from our game programming. That's it for me today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, once again, feel free to contact me in the comment section down below or on Twitter at NotFromEgypt. Um, yeah, so I'll see you in the next one.